Good morning, and uh, a very blessed and welcome good morning to each and every one of you to Peace Through the Word, uh, a, again, a devotional daily ministry of Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church in Benson, Arizona, coming at the United States of America, and uh, coming to you from my study and my residence in Oro Valley, Arizona this morning. Uh, this is Friday, uh, April. Uh, April the 9th, 2021, and uh, just a beautiful morning uh, here in southern Arizona near Tucson, and uh, trusting that you're having a beautiful morning as well, regardless of where you may be uh, worldwide. And again, we thank you immensely uh, for joining us this morning. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, I appreciate also coming to you uh, a little early. Uh, again, this is Friday. So I have uh, things that I like to like to do on Friday morning. Uh, so uh, I thank you for that accommodation. This morning, uh, Dr. Martin Luther is going to share with us uh, the, the subject, crucifying the corrupt nature. Uh, we as sinful human beings carry with us uh, by inheritance, uh, a corrupt nature. Uh, the fall of Adam and Eve was catastrophic in all, all ways. Uh, when you think about it, uh, it's really quite uh, devastating because as a result of their rebellion, there's not one thing on this earth that is not corrupt. Not one thing. And that is really sobering when you take a few minutes to think about that. You know, there's not one thing that is not corrupt. Because everything now has been touched with sin. Everything. It's a catastrophic disaster. And had it not been for God intervening in that, uh, we would have absolutely no hope, no hope. But as a result of that, though, unfortunately, we still carry that corrupt nature with us. We, in, in, in Jesus Christ, by faith in Christ, trusting in Jesus in his life, death, and resurrection, we have forgiveness of sins, life eternal, victory over sin, death, and the devil, a wonderful uh, restored creation, tremendous blessings, no question about that. But unfortunately, brothers and sisters, unfortunately, because of that rebellion, that corrupt, sinful nature still stays with us. Man, you know, it still does. I wish it didn't, but it does. And so there's this constant tension, if you will, between the two. You know, St. Paul addresses it. He says, you know, the things I want to do, I don't do. And the things I don't want to do, those are the things I do. And then he says, what a wretched man I am. And, and, and I would have to say the same thing for me. But, and so then he goes, man, who's going who's gonna to save me from this? And then he goes, thanks be to God in Jesus Christ. And that's, 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 that's our sentiments as well. So... Dr. Martin Luther is going to share that with us a little bit more this morning, and I pray it's going to bless you. I pray it's going to encourage you. I pray it's going to give you genuine, real peace. So, my brothers and sisters, we come together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver us. Make haste to help us, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Brothers and sisters, I'm sharing with you the setting called Matins. And Matins, it simply means morning. It, it's a morning uh, worship setting that the church would do, you know, first thing in the morning. And, and that's what we want to do this morning and get our day starting out well. All right. So praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. Praise the Lord. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O come, let us worship Him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. 
Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hands, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the sheep of his pasture, and the uh, people of his, of his land. <clears throat> Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. O come, let us worship him. So, brothers and sisters, the passage of Scripture I want to share with you comes from St. Paul's letter to the Christian church at Galatia, for which he talks about this subject of our corrupt nature. And he writes to the church about that. And he's writing to us too. And so God the Holy Spirit is speaking to each and every one of us this morning through his holy word, the holy scriptures. So I pray that uh, we would be, be adhering to that. So listen to what St. Paul tells the church here by walking by the spirit and not by our sinful corrupt nature. He says, but I say, Walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. So, brothers and sisters, you know, we have, our flesh really wants to do things that are contrary to what God would have us do in our lives. And that's a constant battle. We all struggle with that, all of us. And so, St. Paul says, if we walk by the Spirit, we won't be gratifying those desires. Well, what does it mean? What does it look like to walk by the Spirit? You know, is that just a nice saying, which really has no um, relevance or, or, or intentional significance? Not, no. <laughs> so he goes, for the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. There comes the conflict. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. In other words, do this, don't do that. <laughs> okay? It says, now the works of the flesh are very evident. Sexual immorality. Boy, we've got that all over the place. With Christians as well. Impurity. Sensuality. Idolatry sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger. We got people that are so angry today. Mm, doesn't take much. Rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. So it just continues. The list is just monumental. And we all have them. So let's, you know, don't say, well, that doesn't pertain to me. Sure does. It pertains to all of us. All right. These I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So that's God's standard, you know. Those that do those things won't inherit the kingdom of God. So where does that leave us? You know, we've done them. Maybe we're still doing them. So where does that leave us? Without Jesus, it doesn't leave us any hope at all. It doesn't. But with Jesus, it most certainly does. It most certainly does. All right? But... The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Let me repeat that. Those who belong to Christ, 
You've been baptized. Jesus has claimed you as his own. He's marked you as a child of God in your baptism. And he gives you forgiveness of sins in those. You have also crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So let's see how Saint how Dr. Martin Luther unpacks this for us this morning, crucifying a corrupt nature. St. Paul says that all those who belong to Christ crucify the corrupt nature along with its shortcomings and sins. Believers have not yet completely taken off their corrupt nature and they are still inclined to sin. They don't fear and love God enough. They are driven to anger, envy, impatient, impatience, sexual immorality, and other evil impulses as well. However, believers don't act on these impulses because, as Paul says here, they crucify their corrupt nature with its desires and sins, suppressing wickedness. Fasting or exercising other spiritual disciplines aren't enough to crucify the corrupt nature. It only happens when believers live by the Spirit, Galatians 5.16. God's threats to punish sin also serve as a warning and frighten believers from sinning. Armed with God's word, faith, and prayer, they refuse to give in to the desires of the corrupt nature by resisting the corrupt nature in this way, they nail it to the cross with its lusts and cravings so that the corrupt nature, though it's still alive and moves, can't achieve what it wants, for it's fastened to the cross by its hands and feet. Let me repeat that. By resisting the corrupt nature in this way, meaning refuse to give in to the desires of the corrupt nature. Refuse to give in. We nail it to the cross. In summary, believers must crucify the corrupt nature for as long as they live on the earth. This means they are aware of its desires, but they don't obey these desires. With the armor of God and with the spiritual weapons of faith, hope, and the sword of the Spirit, believers fight against the corrupt nature with these nails. They fasten it to the cross, so it's forced against its will to be subject to the Spirit. When they die, they put off the corrupt nature completely. When they are resurrected, believers will have a pure nature with no passions and cravings. Amen. So Dr. Dr. Martin Luther is basically saying that it's, it takes some intentionality. We have to intentionally resist those corrupt desires that we have. Intentionally resist them. Put it into action. If there's things that you are harboring and engaging in and what have you, you need to intentionally put those away. Don't do those anymore. All right? Intentionally. Is it gonna is it gonna hurt um, probably or whatever? But it's necessary. Alright, so it needs to happen. So I pray that as we mature in our faith, that we will intentionally walk by the Spirit and not by our flesh. And take these words of St. Paul to heart. We will be blessed by doing so. God's word for us today in a powerful way. Amen. So, O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Sing to the Lord, bless his name, proclaim his salvation from day to day. Now is the Christ risen from the dead and became the first fruits of them that sleep. So glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Give to us, give to the Lord all glory and strength. Give him the honor, do his name. Alleluia, alleluia. We praise you, O God. We acknowledge you to be the Lord. 
All the earth now worships you, the Father everlasting. To you all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To you cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabbath. Heaven and earth are full of your majesty and your glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise you. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise you. The noble army of martyrs praise you. The holy church throughout the world does acknowledge you. The father of an infinite majesty, your adorable, true, and only son. Also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. You are the King of glory, O Christ. You are the everlasting Son of the Father. When you took upon yourself to deliver man, you humbled yourself to be born of a virgin. When you had overcome the sharpness of death, you spread the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You sit at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that you will come to be our judge. We therefore pray you to help your servants, whom you have redeemed with your precious blood. Make them numbered with your saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save your people, bless your heritage, govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify you and we worship your name forever and ever. Grant, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let your mercy be upon us as our trust is in you. O Lord, in you have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. So Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Brothers and sisters, as a result of hearing this message from St. Paul about crucifying our corrupt nature and living by the Spirit, we need to pray. And the best prayer that we can pray is that of the Lord's Prayer. And so together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear our prayers. Let our cries come to you. The Lord be with us and with our spirits. O Lord, our heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger but that all our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, Tremendous joy, tremendous privilege of being able to be with you this morning to share God's word with you, this tremendous truth. And I pray that all of us will be incredibly blessed by putting it into practice and being obedient to that word this morning. So I pray that you'll go out and have a wonderful day today in the Lord. Our Lord's blessings be upon you in abundance. The wheels have been retracted, so have the flaps. So